Hi drummers, hope you're well. Right, just a quick one for you about the drum groove from Creep by Radio Ahead, played by Phil Selway, of course. Shout out to channel member Tom who asked about this and shout out to multiple other channel members who use this groove as a way of building up your bum two quick kicks on the bass drum. Absolutely textbook, classic go-to groove for building up that kind of uh, feel, that kind of technique on the bass drum. Uh, it sounds like this. That kind of thing. So it's a basic straight ahead, straight eights feel, one and two and three and four. And on the hi-hat, snare drum hit is two and four. Uh, it's a two bar loop with a little open hi-hat on the and of beat four at the end of the second bar. So that's quite nice to do if you're playing the song. But the, the, again, the real value here is in that, but is that bass drum thing. Now this is drummers, this is a thing that drummers hit a lot when they've been playing for a while and it typically comes in about the grade three level. And, uh, what we do at grade zero, grade one, and grade two, pretty much exclusively, is we play, when we play variations within a straight eights feel, basic rock or pop type of groove, those variations on the bass drum and the snare drum, in fact, are in line with the hi-hat. So if you're playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, the bass and the snare variations that you do will always be in sync with the hi-hat. So like this. Uh, that kind of thing. So there's never a moment where the bass drum goes in between the hi-hat. Now this, which was actually in the old grade three syllabus for Trinity Rock and Pop, the previous syllabus, is a classic example of what you start seeing at grade three, which is that bass drum dropping in between the hi-hat flow. And not only that, very often being followed by one or more notes shortly after. Ba bum bum. Now the big thing I want to say about this is this is something we we earn as drummers and it really does take some time from my own experience and I started playing the drums when I was 13 I think I was at the very least and probably more than this honestly a, a couple of years into solidly playing regularly practicing an actual practice plan not just goofing around but actually practicing deliberately a couple of years at the very very least before I started to feel comfortable with this this is a physical skill that for my in my opinion and from my experience requires physical change to happen in our body it really isn't something because I think that the experience I have as a drum teacher is often people come in and they're really confused about why they can't get this and often they've been playing the drums for a few weeks or a few months or maybe a year or something like that but they often I mean the phrases that I just hear over and over again people say oh, I'm, I'm really struggling with this and I don't know why people say oh, I'm so confused why I don't get this people think think there's something wrong with them and I just really can't repeat enough times that just in my experience you just got to be kind with yourself uh, as ever you need that consistency of your practice you need that persistence and you need actually a, as well a, I think a, a, a clear focus on the process of building this up and not this anxious focus on the result or did I get it was that right was that right like who cares about the result if you get as ever with like with anything in life if you nail your process and you get the process of working on something right and you sort of fall in love with that and you focus on that the result is inevitable absolutely 100% inevitable you can forget about that you know it's going to come sooner or later if you just keep uh, on your process in the right way so let's just I'm just going to talk about some of the ways that we start to build this up uh, I've talked about bass drum technique quite a lot so I'll be very brief here I will link to other videos that I've done that cover that if you're interested uh, my favorite technique to use on a bass drum is a simple heel up bouncing on the ball of the foot technique like this Now the basic idea here is I'm just playing a little hop, right? I'm just bouncing on the floor and the, from the ball of my foot or big toe. By the way, I'm not saying this is the only technique. It definitely isn't. I'm not saying this is the best. I'm just saying this is a blindingly simple one that in my experience of teaching hundreds, thousands of people, it, it, it's actually one that's really is genuine, generally the most effective and the simplest and gets the least sort of distracted into other things or just it's just simple and effective and if you practice it and you repeat it it will and you're persistent and consistent it will it will come so the basic idea is yeah bouncing on the ball of the foot now the way, the way i like to think of it is when you play a single note you you do the, your bounce
And when you land, the whole of your foot comes back to rest. So the beta comes back off the drum head. So on a single note, you've just got that boom, and it comes back. For this, for a quick double, for a bum bum, the way I think of it is we do our little hop. Our, if this is my foot, my foot lands, but the, only the ball of the foot, like the big toe bit, lands on the first note. We hop immediately again, and the whole of your foot comes down for the second note. So, and the, and the principle is whatever the last one in the sequence is, that's the whole of your foot coming down. So if you play two notes, you see that with my foot coming down at the end. Uh, if you did three, you'd go, if they were sufficiently quick that you needed to use this technique, you'd do three, four. So the point is the last one in the sequence is your foot flopping down again. That's how I like to think of it. Again, that's not definitive. That's just my take on it. I find that very effective with a lot of people. Um, the most important element of that for me, of any of this stuff, is the bouncing on the ball of the foot. I think of the leg as being nice and loose, just hanging down. And this really is just a hop, again, from the ball of your foot. If you did it with both your feet and you were standing up, you would do this. A little hop, right? That business. People often ask me stuff like, do, does the foot come off the pedal? No, not really. It's a hop. Just enough that I would say that your, my shoe is pretty much in contact with the pedal all the time. Yeah, I'd say my foot is in contact with the pedal all the time, but there's a nice little hop there. Very loose. The leg is just kind of just going along for the ride, I would say, for the most part here. And uh, yeah, it's all, I can't say enough times, that little hop uh, from the ball of the foot. Now, some ways that we would build this up are, number one, go very, very, very slowly. Again, this is, I think, where, this is where people are so confused. They just, they just try and play it at full speed. And they say, this is hard. I don't know why I can't get it. You've got to earn it. I can't say this enough times, right? They're like it, at least a couple of years, I would say, on average, before drummers start getting really physically sort of confident to play this on a gig or, you know, along with music and it, and it sounds smooth and not have that thing where they sort of tense up and anticipate it. I mean, that's my ex, that was certainly my experience of learning it and it's most people's, I think. So one is go incredibly slowly. Just show your hands and your feet uh, the coordination here. Uh, now, one way you can start doing that is actually just do one note at a time at first as well. Again, this so, so often I see people coming to this, and I totally relate to this. I'm never I'm not criticizing anybody for a second. I'm just talking about sort of my experience of seeing hundreds, thousands of people learn this, is that we often try and, we just try and start at the end. We try and just play the finished product. You've got to build the thing, man, bit little bit by little bit. Like, give your brain a chance to consolidate it, give your nervous system, your hand hands, feet, brain working together, a chance to really sort of get to know this. So what we often do is just play the first of those three hits. So we're going to play the bass drum on beat one, and then we're going to play that bass drum on one and two and uh, especially if this is new, right? If, if the idea of playing between the hi-hats is new, we're not going to try and do everything at once. Should say if you do try do, doing everything at once and it works and you're playing smoothly, great. Like just turn this video off now. But I'm, I'm assuming for most people it didn't, didn't for me, it, it isn't doing hence the fact you're watching this. So uh, let's just do that one first note on the art uh, of beat two, right? One and two and uh, three and two and one and two and uh, three and And one and two and a uh, three and four and that's a great place to start. People often say to me, well, when I try and play grooves like this, my right stick or my hi-hat stick just goes with the bass drum. Have you got any tips? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're not, you haven't done this bit of the process, mate. You haven't really just consolidated and got to know and just cemented that idea of the bass drum dropping between the hi-hats. Take your time, build it. You have to earn this thing one step at a time, right? So, and, t and uh, I'm big into running at the minute. Right? I love a bit of running. The thing dr uh, runners talk about all the time is time on your feet. There's just no way around time on your feet. And I think of it in exactly the same terms here. There's no way around that time sitting at your kit or even just doing it away from your kit, honestly, as well. It works great. I always think if you can play a, a foot thing on the floor, it's going to sound great on a pedal. But there's no way around those hours, uh, time spent just sitting, showing your hands and your feet and your brain uh, that and getting to know it. The, the answer to almost every question is keep going, probably slow down, but definitely do it more and keep going. So uh, that's the first note, one and two and uh. Now we're going to go 
a three. So we're going to add in the note that is with in sync with the hi hat on beat three, like this. And a three and four and one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four hundreds of times. Do you understand? Like, do not you know, the one rule of having lessons. I always think with me is like. You, you are no a no point allowed to say the phrase, I'm struggling with this. I don't know why. I don't know why I can't just get it. Because you can't just get it. It doesn't work like that. The universe doesn't work like that, man. You've got to you've got to earn it hundreds of times, right? Get to know it. Make it your nervous tick whenever you're sitting around. Even if you, like I was just saying, if you're away from the kit, here's your hi-hat, here's your snare, there's your bass drum. One and two and a uh, three and four. You might have six flipping months doing that, right? So what? In six months, you'll be able to do it. Whereas if you don't do that, in six months, you'll still be there going, oh, I'm struggling with this. Any tips? So again, no disrespect to anybody. But this is just my, my experience of people learning this and 100% include myself in this uh, This description of some, some, you know, the way often this sort of attitude people bring to this and the expectation that it'll happen quickly. And then thirdly, uh, a three and. So we're going to hit the... This bass drum is, hope, if we got to this point, hopefully not, not such a big deal. In fact, at the sort of tempo of creep by radiohead which is yeah 92 beats per minute you could probably think of this third one in fact as a separate stroke you know i talked about how at the end of the sequence it's the whole of your foot coming down onto the pedal or at least that's, that's how i think of it i would say this third one is actually a separate one of those so on the bum 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 it would be exactly like that for me dum the only quick dub with the quick double at the start but bum and then the, the third one on the and of beat three is actually just a separate hit anyway. So here we are with the full groove, slow. Three and four and one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three. And two and a three and four and and if if you if at that stage go as slow as you like if you need to break it down to and I say this to so many people and so few people actually do it uh, if if you have to break it down to just saying the moment out loud saying the event out loud and then doing it so for example here you'd go hi hat and kick hi hat on its own hi hat and snare Hi-hat on its own, bass drum on its own, hi-hat and bass drum, hi-hat and bass drum, hi-hat and snare, hi-hat on its own. That really is it, man. I think people wildly overcomplicate practice and coordination like it's some dark art. You just you just do that, basically. Just show your hands and your feet and your brain the combinations. Give your brain a chance to learn it. That nasty little idea of natural talent that people use as a, a reason they, they haven't done stuff or can't do stuff oh I'm, I knew I wasn't talented I don't have that coordination oh, wait, people say it's like patting your head and rubbing your tummy isn't it no it just starts at the beginning a failure to start at the beginning is in my experience in my opinion 99% of the time uh, the issue a failure to start at the beginning and, 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 a, and a, a, a wanting to move on to the next stages too quickly including you know trying to start at the end so just bit by bit man i can't stress it enough times once you've got a bit of a feel for that and that might be months in that might be two or three years into your drumming it was in my case i didn't learn this in months i learned it in by sound started to feel and i thought there was something wrong with my pedal i thought there was something wrong with me i thought i was not very good at coordination i thought all those things but for me it was like yeah two or three years i reckon into my drumming i started to feel confident with this can't say it enough times take your time uh, you are not allowed to say, I can't get this. I don't know why I'm not getting this. Uh, just keep going. Once you've got to the point where you can at least line the notes up, start slow. You know what I'm going to say. Uh, slow to fast to slow. Classic way to practice.
and bit by bit, I'll whiz this through a, a little bit here, so I can keep this video relatively short and sweet. So I'm slightly speeding through the process here, but go faster and faster. Now remember when we're doing this slow to fast to slow process, what we're always looking for is our improvement zone, so-called, that beautiful zone where we can just about still do it, but it, and it might be very, very slow at first. Your improvement zone might be the saying it out loud thing at the beginning, do you know what I mean? But you're looking to work up to that zone where you can just about do it, you can still play it, and it is still correct. You don't stop or you don't make mistakes, like, but it's not necessarily 100% fluent, and you start to feel, like it says in the great stick control by... Uh, George Lawrence Stone, uh, the merest hint of tension. You'll get to a certain point. You might think, okay, you might think, oh, okay, I'm starting to feel just that little bit of tension coming in. Hold it there, 10 seconds or 20 seconds, and bring it back down again. Do that hundreds or even, well, definitely thousands of times, and it will come good. It's inevitable. Steve Martin, didn't he? he took up the banjo, didn't he? And he's promised himself when he started it that he would give it 40 years because he's on the on the reasoning that you don't see or hear of many people who have done something for 40 years and who aren't really, really good at it. I think that sums up everything you need to know about practicing your instrument. Uh, can be consistent, be persistent, release expectation from the result because that's a, a mugs game. Just focus on the process, repeat, like if you can if you can get to that place man if you can find satisfaction in focusing on the process and working then the results just come the results just take care of themselves i'm uh, absolutely convinced of that so there we are i'll just play the whole two bar loop a little bit open close hi hat on that second bar That's the one, classic groove, classic groove. And uh, yeah, Phil Selway, uh, a great drummer. When you listen to that record, I think they're probably quite young. It's got like a certain, almost like, even though it's quite a slow tune, it's almost got like a certain sort of nervous energy to it. I always think it's got a slightly sort of nervous vibe about it, which really fits the music and it's great. And it's funny listening to it now. I remember listening to that record a lot, actually, when I was, I guess, you know, 15 or 16 or whatever. And uh, it's funny listening. I had a, a while, I guess, of not listening to it very closely it's funny listening back to it you hear things that you didn't hear that you know all that time ago and one of the things i heard was that yeah slight sort of nervous energy to it so even if you find that you're not 100 percent relaxed playing this but it probably fits the vibe anyway but i would say generally speaking our aim is to of course develop confident smooth flow in our playing and that's just some of my thoughts about how we might build that up with the bass drum i hope that's helpful uh and just well, i don't know it's just based on my experience like i said a lot of years working with hundreds of thousands of people um if you find yourself saying the phrase, I'm struggling with this, this is hard, uh, I don't know why I'm not getting it. That's probably my my little, that's my little trigger phrase, right? People say, I don't know why I'm not getting it. Think, well, like you, so that, it's such a clear, clear message they're sending out there to, to in my opinion, to an, maybe to an experienced teacher that, that they're just look, not looking at it in a way, in a healthy way, not looking at it in a broad way, not looking at it in a holistic way, whatever you want to call it. They're not seeing the big picture, whatever you ever whatever cliche you want to apply to it, they're just not thinking in terms of like a realistic time frame uh, and realistic expectations about building up something uh, of this sort. Grade three, man, like my teacher used to say, there's a great, there's a reason there's a number three on the front of the book. It's because zero, one, and two have come before and you're standing on the shoulders of those skills. Years. All right, I hope that makes a bit of sense. Thanks a million. Shout out to Tom who uh, asked about this one. All the, all the channel members and drum students that I teach you use that as a great way to just get a, a feel for this groove. Just enjoy the process, man. I think what, at the heart of all this is just enjoy it. It's cool. Like it's, not something to worry about or stress about that you're not getting you're not playing it perfectly at full speed with the music in a short time frame just enjoy the process man you, this is 
is what this the whole thing is about. It's supposed to be an enjoyable hobby. Just enjoy the process. Uh, that's my uh, opinion on it. Thanks for watching as always. Really appreciate it. Please like, share and subscribe. Uh, shout out to all the amazing people who support this channel via my Buy Me A Coffee support page. Thanks to all the lovely people who buy me a coffee. Thanks a million. I'll do some shout outs soon. Um, and then thanks as well to all, of course, to Tom and all the amazing uh, channel members who come in and have supported this channel. As a channel member for £10 a month, you're supporting this channel like crazy, helping it grow. I massively appreciate it. And you're getting a load of stuff in return, including a complimentary uh, Zoom or face-to-face -face session, a customized, a personalized practice plan for you, which will draw up tip normally at that session and, uh, and then change and adapt for you and add to it as you progress uh, you can ask questions i'll do video responses send you practice videos i'll do video replies I'll hopefully give some constructive feedback on those uh, you get the notation and practice along versions for tutorial videos such as this uh, members videos and a whole load of other stuff ongoing drum support uh, for you as best i can so i hope if, if that sounds like it'd be of interest and you're in a position to and would like to support this channel in that way please check out the link at my buy me a coffee page above or below it's where it says buy a coffee become a channel member here uh, thanks for watching as always really appreciate it and uh see you soon thanks a lot